Hi students, I am Pravin Sebastian Paul. In this lecture, we are discussing the basic fundamental principles of object-oriented programming. While we are considering the object-oriented programming, the main points or main advantages of OOP's concepts are class hierarchy, inheritance, dynamic inheritance, multiple inheritance, encapsulation or information hiding, and finally polymorphism. So these are the major advantages of this information programming new concept and we are discussing one of each other. When we are considering the class hierarchy, an object oriented system organizes classes into subclasses, superclasses, hierarchy. The properties and behaviors are used as the basis for making distinction between classes are at the top and more specific are at the bottom of the class hierarchy. The family car is the subclass of a class known as motor vehicle class. A subclass inherit all the properties and methods defined in its superclass. For example, let us consider the motor vehicle class. So as we all know, the class motor vehicle or a vehicle means the basic concept of vehicle is transportation or the basic function of a vehicle is transportation. So let us consider the motor vehicle as the base class. While we are considering a base class motor vehicle, the fundamental functions of the vehicle class is it has the class has the different attributes like uh, engines, doors, machines, brake, clutches, gears, etc. And the basic methods or functions used in this class is run off or move off or carry off these are the basic methods and while we are considering the subclasses the subclass means some other class can use or reuse or some adhere or adhere some basic principles from this class in our example we are considering a derived class called a bus truck and car so each of these new classes or derived classes occur all the fundamental principles of the base class vehicle the derived class bus truck and car has all the functions and methods of the base class vehicle plus each of these class has its own methods and attributes while we are considering a bus as we all know bus are used to transport a lot of persons a bus can accommodate is greater than a car or a truck and these bus can again be categorized as private on the bus as well as government or public on the bus in the second class or the second category or the second derived class truck these trucks are derived from the vehicle so truck has all the fundamental functions of vehicle and there are some specific functions the trucks are basically used to transport goods from one point to another so that is a major category or major function of that particular class called a truck and again this truck can be categorized or sub classified into mini lorries and heavy trucks and heavy duty vehicles and when we are coming to the derived class car a car is derived from the base class vehicle so it has all the properties of vehicle plus a car has its own some properties so the basic or fundamental principle of a car is the personal transportation mechanism. So we are using a car to transport from or move from one point to another. And again, these cars can be subclassified into race cars, family cars, SUVs, MPVs, mini vehicles, etc. like that. So this is how in an object oriented programming, a class can be divided or hierarchified into different categories. Secondly, we are discussing the term inheritance. It is a property of the object-oriented system that allow object to be built from other objects. Inheritance allows explicit taking advantage of the commonality of object when constructing new classes. Inheritance is a relationship between classes where one class is the parent class and another class is the derived or child class. The derived class holds the properties and behaviors of the base class or parent class in addition to the properties and behaviors of the derived class. So as we discussed in our previous example, let us consider a base class called vehicle and we can see a subclass known as car. So this car is deriving the properties of vehicle 
and let us consider another subclass of this car so we are considering another subclass subclass known as hyundai this hyundai is deriving the properties of car so the subclass hyundai has all the properties of car plus all the properties of vehicle since the car class is a subclass of vehicle class again we can see some another inheritance properties we can see three another classes these classes are Centro, Sonata and Accent. All these classes are inheriting the properties of Hyundai. So this type of hierarchification is known as inheritance property of object oriented concept. In the property of inheritance, we can see dynamic inheritance as well as multiple inheritance. In dynamic inheritance, it allows the object to change and evolve over time. Since the base class provide properties and attributes for objects, hanging base classes change the properties and attributes of a class. For example, a window object change to icon and basic again. When we double click the folder, the contents will be displayed in a window and when we close it, the changes back into its icon. It involves changing a base class between a window class and icon class. So this type of inheritance is known as dynamic inheritance. And when we are dealing with a multiple inheritance, some object oriented system permit a class to inherit its states that is attributes and behavior from more than one superclass. This kind of inheritance is referred to as multiple inheritance. For example, let us consider a utility vehicle. It inherits the attributes from the car as well as truck classes. And another important point to be discussed is the encapsulation or information hiding. The information hiding is the principle of concealing the internal data and procedures of an object. In C++, the encapsulation protection mechanism with private, public and protected members are introduced. In per class protection, class methods can access any object of that class and not just the receiver. In per object protection, methods can access only the receiver. An important factor in achieving encapsulation is the design at different classes of object and operate using a common protocol. This means that Many object will respond to the message using operations tailored to its class. A car engine is an example of encapsulation. Although engine may differ in implementation, the interface between the driver and car is through a common protocol. And finally, the point to be discussed is polymorphism. Poly means many and morph means form. So simply polymorphism means many forms. It means objects that can take on or assume many different forms. Polymorphism means that the same operations may behave differently on different classes. The book classification defines polymorphism as the relationship of objects may differ many different classes by some common superclasses. Polymorphism allows us to write a generic reusable code more easily because we can specify general instructions and delegate the implementation detail to the objects involved. For example, in a payroll system, the manager, office worker and production worker objects all will respond to the compute payroll message but the actual operations performed are object specific. So my dear students, in this lecture, we had discussed the fundamental principles of object-oriented programming or the basic OOPS concepts. Those concepts are class hierarchy, inheritance, multiple inheritance, encapsulation and polymorphism. So my dear students, hope you had understood this topic. This is the fundamental principles of OOPS. So dear students, kindly go through this assignment question. The question is, write in detail about the OOPS principles. The OOPS principles are class hierarchy, inheritance, dynamic inheritance, multiple inheritance, encapsulation and polymorphism. So my dear students, in the upcoming lecture, we will discuss the object relationship and associations. 
So see you soon. Until then, goodbye. Thank you and all the best.